Kawa Ijen embraces a mystical lake that is the same shade as jade. The arduous life of miners who collect sulfur and carry it was embedded in that place. I also saw interesting fire that rose from the ground of Loranga and Tokol on Madura Island. I'm leaving the extreme land where mysteries and danger coexist and am headed for the great inheritance of Java. I will be visiting Borobudur, one of the world's three greatest Buddhist historic sites that holds numerous secrets, and Prambanan, a beautiful Hindu temple. Today I am off to find the soul of Java. The island of Java lies in the center of Indonesia, which stretches out east and west with the equator in the middle. The main power of Indonesia prospered in this area since ancient times. Today's journey begins in the ancient city of Yogyakarta, also called the spiritual hometown of Java. Yogyakarta, which is located in the southern part of Java, is also called Yogyakarta. This city used to be the capital of the Mataram Sultanate, and in its streets live the history and culture of Java. It was also the capital of Indonesia from 1945 to 1949, during the Indonesian National Revolution against the Netherlands after the nation declared its independence. It is a sculpture that makes me realize that Indonesians think of Yogyakarta as the hometown for their national spirit. I choose Kraton, the palace in the center of the old town, to begin my journey in this historic and ancient city. Kraton is a palace where the sultans who ruled the nation and the royal family lived. The palace is open to tourists, so you can visit the place where the inauguration took place, the court, and the ballroom. This is the ballroom that was used to entertain guests or hold parties. Now gamelan, the traditional Javanese percussive ensemble, or dance performances take place for tourists. Wow, 멋지네요. 이곳은 왕이 실제로 살고 있는 집입니다. 현재 이곳의 왕은 이곳의 도지사이기도 한데요. 저기 보이시는 문이 닫혀 있는 것은 왕이 집에 없고 도지사 사무실에서 업무를 보고 있다는 뜻입니다. The position of Sultan is more of an honorary position now, but the people still revere him as the envoy of God and as their spiritual leader. They still have vassals who worked for the Sultan for several generations. There are approximately 1,600 vassals, including the 600 or so guards. However, the Sultan has no royal authority, and the palace is being run on income from tourism and resident donations. So vassals have very low income. This is why most vassals have a separate job to make a living. The 
teman-teman ini mempunyai latar belakang yang berbeda tapi semuanya eh, mantan katakanlah mantan pegawai mantan pamong desa mantan guru mantan TNI Polri gitu The people are proud of being vassals as they follow in the footsteps of their ancestors. However, they need secondary jobs to make a living. What are their lives like outside of the palace? I visit a guard's home, which is located near the palace. Kerja, kerja di keraton, lalu bagi petani. He chose to grow jambu, a tropical fruit, to make a living, while keeping his job as a vassal at Kraton, as many generations in his family did too. It's physically exhausting, but Vujo says he feels happy. Nanam jambu seperti ini untuk biaya hidup keluarga itu. There are jambu farms all over the village. I decide to visit one with him. The jambu is a tropical fruit that requires much effort to grow. Oh, Farmers have to climb trees to pick the ripe jambu. They are very good at climbing trees. Jambu contains a large amount of water and cellulose and are one of the most widely consumed fruits in Indonesia. The jambu is usually eaten raw or made into an Indonesian fruit salad called lujak. <laughs> jambu is the main source of income for this village. They also create extra income for the village. Ini buah jambu ini. Oh. Kalau malam ini dimakan kelelawar ini. Di sini banyak kelelawar. The extra income comes from the bats. Many bats gather in this area where several jambu farms are. They eat the jambu fruit or small insects. The village residents use bats for food or medicine so they can create quite a profit when caught and sold. It's interesting to learn that bats can live on the roof of a house like this, when I thought they only lived in dark caves. A man sets a net under the eaves and climbs up to the roof. He pokes between the tiles with a rod. He says this makes the bats that are hiding in the gaps of the roof go out to the net. Wow, the bats really do come out. The bats are caught in the net one by one. Several kinds of bats live in Indonesia. This one is called a black myotis. 
Pak Cik Jawa sama Bu Eo? Oh ya ini untuk obat asma sama ini sama sini. Kato? Ah. Iya. Iya. Sim sejin dah Bu Eo. Iya. Bat meat is the special source for protein in this area. It is considered a haute cuisine because of its soft and chewy texture. The next morning, we head for a market to sell the bat. This is a bird market. A variety of birds and their feet are sold here. All of the different kinds of birds in the world must be here. This is where bats are sold for medicinal use. It's usually used to make medicine for coughs and asthma. Bujo thinks it a great honor to work as a vassal for Kraton. He's happy to be able to keep that honorable position thanks to his side job. I go over to see what the people are doing with the birds. And they were holding auditions for the bird sound competition. 인도네시아 사람들이 새를 좋아한다는 얘기 들었는데 아 이렇게 콘테스트도 있을 정도는 좀 몰랐어요. Indonesians believe that the sound of birds brings luck. That's why each household has a bird that sings. It naturally led to their love for birds and a competition was born. The bird that is believed to bring the people luck. It also brings wealth and honor to them. Not only does the winning bird's owner get a large amount in prize money, along with honor, but the bird's value also skyrockets. The evaluation of the bird's sound is very strict, and selecting judges is a picky process. Judges have to acquire a bird license and go through special training for one year. Irama lagu yaitu bahwa ketika burung itu berbunyi membawakan berkicau dengan ngerol dengan penuh variasi penuh harmonisasi sehingga enak didengar dan menimbulkan rasa puas bagi pendengarnya. The judges lay down flags that have scores written on them after listening to the birds. More red flags means a higher score. I see a contestant who looks happy after the competition. Three. Yes. Oh, itu karena burung masih anak-an masih junior umur masih lima bulan pertama kali turun ke kontes burung. Berlatih. 
These people believe that the beautiful chirping of birds brings good luck. After getting a taste of the different culture of Indonesia, I head off to find the great inheritance of Yogyakarta. A huge temple stands in the middle of a dense forest. It is Borobudur, one of the world's greatest Buddhist temples. Borobudur means Buddhist temple on a hill. People wearing shorts, miniskirts, or sleeveless shirts are not allowed in the temple. Okay. The magnificent sight of Borobudur overwhelms those who see it. This huge pyramid-shaped temple that was designated as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1991 is a great structure that expresses Buddhism's vision of the universe. The carvings on the wall go on for over six kilometers. It is praised as the world's largest and complete Buddhist historic site. It shows the philosophy of Buddhism about punitive justice, the life story of Buddha, nature, including animals and plants, and the lives of ordinary people. It holds various sites. Currently, 86% of the Indonesian population is Muslim. However, this proves that the Buddhist culture grew and prospered on this land in the past. Borobudur is 10 stories high. The walk up to the top floor seems very long. The steep stairs take me to a bell-shaped pagoda called a stupa, which catches my eye. A stupa is usually a place used to store the ashes of Buddha or monks who made great achievements. This temple has a total of 72 stupas. The large stupa in the middle is empty. A statue of Buddha occupies the stupa below it. Di dalam ini ada semua stupa ini ada patung Buddha di dalamnya. Karena di, dari dulu sampai sekarang tidak ada relik Buddha yang ada di dalam. Karena itu ada stupa di dalamnya. Construction of this World Heritage Site was completed in the year 842. It was built 300 years before Angkor Wat in Cambodia and 400 years earlier than the cathedrals in Europe. However, it was forgotten by the world for over 1,000 years until early in the 19th century. It was because of the eruption of Mount Merapi Mount Merapi, one of the most active volcanoes in the world, turned the world upside down again in 2010. Mount Merapi erupted several times from the end of October to November in 2010. Some 350 people died and over 300,000 victims suffered in the incident. The villagers of Kangkringan, who suffered from the volcanic eruptions, settled down in a new area last year. Ah, 
슬라마 소레. 슬라마 소레 안녕하세요. Three years have passed, but it remains a vivid memory in the villagers' minds. Wangkumalang sudah ada orang yang bilang, eh, keluar, keluar, api sudah dekat dengan gitu. Jadi kali, itu, ini sudah bingung, akan lari kemana, yang gitu. Tapi kalau yang tidak lari, karena semua warga kali adem itu yang, karena ya waktu malam, ya di tempat SMP ya Pak, ya tempat SMP itu, nah itu semua lingkungan itu sudah sama lari semua itu, buat semua, buat semua, hanya satu kampung itu yang masih, di itu itu paginya itu baru, nah itu sudah, wah, takut. All hell broke loose. The moment Mount Merapi erupted, it took away everything from the villagers. Satu orang itu kan semua sudah lari ya, ini hanya waktu akan mengambil sepeda. Nah itu enggak ada, sudah tidak ada waktu, karena punya speed cuma hanya lima menit. Nah ada menit itu akan mengambil sepedanya, nah itu sudah tentu material itu, ya kena. Wah, 지금은 이렇게 풀도 자라고 이 아름다운 경관에 와 그렇게 엄청난 화산 피해가 있었다는 게 믿겨지지가 않네요. 그러나 kedahsyatan awan panas dari merapi melulu lantakkan tempat ini dan tempat-tempat ini pun menjadi hanya tinggal langsung hancur kayak gini dan kayu-kayu ini menjadi hangus terbakar. Traces of the disastrous incident remain here. Ejecta, including ashes, poured out constantly for days, turning the entire village into a drab gray. Nevertheless, over 70,000 people live at the foot of Mount Merapi. Sehingga sini tanah akan lebih baik. This area that was covered in volcanic ash turned into fertile land full of minerals. That's why people can't move away and leave this land behind. Contoh pasir untuk bangunan yang ada di Merapi yang dari puncak Merapi seperti ini. Oh. Ini untuk bangunan dari Merapi untuk dijual. These are the two facets of a volcano that contain both calamity and blessings. This volcanic fire has caused many people to suffer, but after a few months, they have been given some gifts. Today, we have arrived at the top of Mount Merapi, the mountain of fire is a source of fear and respect to the villagers. Mount Merapi covered a treasure of Java under its ashes. It is Prambanan, an ancient Hindu temple. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Apa khabar? Ini Candi Prambanan. Ah, 오늘 여기 보여주실 거예요? This is Topo. He will guide me around Prambanan today. Tahun 1584 ada gempa bumi besar, semuanya hancur, semua rusak. Ditemukan lagi tahun 1733. Prambanan is a World Heritage Site designated by UNESCO and one of the world's greatest ancient Hindu structures. However, like Borobudur, only traces of a severe incident remain of Prambanan.
It caved in from a volcanic eruption and earthquake in the 16th century. Prambanan was neglected for a long time, but it has recently started being restored. Tetapi baru dua candi yang selesai dibangun kembali. Ini satu. Di sudut itu satu. Jadi masih 222 lagi yang harus disusun lagi. There used to be 224 shrines in this temple that were dedicated to Shiva, Vishnu, and Devi, the three deities of Hinduism. Prambanan shows off elegant balance and precise carvings. It is known as the greatest architectural work in Java. Rara Jongrang, which means slender virgin, is an especially interesting legend. Kalau menurut legenda cerita masyarakat tempat di sini, candi ini dibangun hanya dalam waktu satu malam. A prince proposed to a princess of an enemy country, and the princess promised to marry him if he built 1,000 shrines in a single night. However, when the prince succeeded in building the 1,000 shrines, she secretly tore down one of the shrines. When the prince found out the truth, he was enraged and turned the princess into a statue, making her into the 1,000th shrine. The beautiful princess in the legend, the statue of Rara Jongrang, is here. The shrine of Shiva is the largest in Prambanan, at 47 meters high. If you walk into the shrine, the interior is decorated elaborately with carvings of images from ancient myths. The story of Ramayana, an epic recorded in Sanskrit from ancient India, is carved onto the wall. Oh, 여기 Rama, Lakshmana, Sita, 이 힌두 신화의 주인공들이 다 여기 조각돼 있네요. Like the shrine for the greatest Hindu deity it is, four different pagodas lie here, including one for Shiva. The most popular pagoda is the one of Durga, Shiva's wife. Locals call her Rara Jongrang, and believe that touching her statue will bring you beauty. The overwhelming feeling I got from Prambanan in the daytime continues at night. Several groups of students are here too. A performance is held at night at this outdoor stage with Prambanan in the background. It's a dance performance that expresses the story of Ramayana, a Hindu myth. Ramayana is a dance performance of the turbulent life of Rama, the prince of Kosala.
the performance, Prince Rama gets the help of General Hanuman and goes to battle in order to fight Ravana, the devil that kidnapped his wife Sheeta, and succeeds in saving her. With the beautifully lit up Prambanan in the background, the extraordinary performance is performed to gamelan, traditional Indonesian music. It's an amazing performance that depicts the religious inspiration and artistic soul of the Javanese. Java in Indonesia. It was an exciting place where I encountered unexplored lands of the world. I was able to see the extreme and magnificent Mother Nature and experience the gravity of life. I also felt the rough breath of the living earth. I won't be able to forget the numerous happy moments I experienced for a long time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>